This video introduces the fundamentals of using worksheets in the Snowflake web interface to execute queries and perform other DML and DDL operations. It also covers some basic database concepts. Databases are logical containers for organizing your data into schemas and tables. Because they are logical constructs, you can query across multiple databases in a single query as long as you have the necessary access privileges. The Databases page displays information about the databases you have created or have privileges to access. To view and perform tasks on the objects in a database, click on the database name. If your role has the necessary privileges, you can create and manage objects in the database, such as schemas, tables, and views. Try creating a database and table to see how quick and easy it is. Note that the public schema was created automatically and the table was created in this schema by default. All of these tasks can also be performed using standard SQL DDL commands. One powerful feature of Snowflake is zero copy cloning of databases, schemas, and tables. A zero copy clone only uses additional storage if you change or add data in either the cloned object or the source object. For more information about cloning and other database operations, see the Snowflake documentation. This video demonstrates querying tables in the Snowflake Sample Data database shared by Snowflake. If you don't see the database in the Databases page, it hasn't been enabled for your account. To have it enabled, please contact Snowflake support. The sample database is read-only. You cannot make changes to the database or any of its tables, but you can query its tables just as you would any other database. The database contains multiple sample datasets, each stored in a separate schema. Next, we'll use a worksheet to run some queries against the sample database. To create a worksheet, simply click the plus sign. Worksheets provide a powerful environment for building and executing queries. They can also be used to perform all other SQL operations except for loading data, which worksheets do not support. Bulk data loading will be covered in a later video. You can create as many worksheets as you need with up to 50 open at one time. When you create a worksheet, Snowflake initiates a separate session for the worksheet and uses your current role as the default for the session. If you've been assigned multiple roles, you can set your role within a worksheet independently from the web interface and other worksheets. This is an important concept to understand because the role you set determines the objects you can access and therefore the operations you can perform in the worksheet. You can change roles in a worksheet at any time without losing your work. For more information about your roles and access control, see the Snowflake documentation. Each worksheet also has a warehouse, database, and schema. Together with the role, they specify the context used for all SQL executed in the worksheet. Use the drop-down menu to set the context. Alternatively, you can execute use commands in the worksheet to specify this information or you can reference the fully qualified names of tables or views directly in your SQL. Remember, most queries and DML operations in Snowflake, including inserting and updating table rows, require a running virtual warehouse which consumes Snowflake credits. The worksheet displays information about each query you execute, including the ID and status along with the results. You can also view the history of queries executed in the current worksheet session. All changes you make in the worksheet are saved periodically to ensure you don't lose any work. To rename a worksheet, simply select the current name and type the new name. Some other useful worksheet features are the object browser for viewing the databases, schemas, tables, and views you can access. And data preview, which lets you view the first 100 rows of data from any table or view in the object browser. Now let's take a look at the tutorials provided by Snowflake. The tutorials are self-contained, fully annotated SQL scripts that query the data sets in the sample database. To run a tutorial, click the arrow in Open Tutorials, then select a tutorial. The interface creates a worksheet and loads the contents of the tutorial. 
Tutorial 2 uses the Open Weather Map Sample dataset, which contains public weather data stored in JSON format so you can try out Snowflake's high-performance semi-structured functionality. It also demonstrates creating a user-defined function. Note that the same menu lets you open and manage all your saved worksheets and also load SQL scripts. First, select the virtual warehouse for processing the queries. Next, execute the commands in the tutorial either individually or all together. Note that the commands in the tutorial use fully qualified names. If you wish, you can make changes to the tutorial script and keep the changes as a saved worksheet. The worksheet only shows results for its own session. To see a complete list of all queries you executed in the last 14 days across all worksheets and sessions, click on History. You can filter the history using the provided filters. To view the details of a query, click the link in the Query ID column. To learn more about the performance and the behavior of a query, click the Profile tab in the Query Details page. The Query Profile displays a graphical representation of the processing steps for the query, including the execution time for each step and how the time was spent. This concludes the short introduction to worksheets and querying. For more information, see the other videos in this series or the Snowflake documentation. Thanks for watching.